Hello and welcome to Real Metal. I am your host, Mark. I'd like to introduce my panel. Joining us once again, we have Ben. Joining us for the first time, Taylor McNally. Hi. And James. Hello. <laughs> Just James. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> Uh, this time around, we watched Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, now, ben, had you seen this film before? Yeah, when it was released. Uh, waited for it to come out, and so when it was released, haven't seen it since. No, Taylor? I've seen it many times. Yeah. I think I've been high on mushrooms every time I've watched it, though, so it <laughs> might be a look different. <laughs> <laughs> that might have helped. Each time. Uh, <laughs> James? I've seen this quite a few times since it's released, for sure. All right, now I'm going to throw to the trailer but we may get flagged for that, because you do. Uh, <laughs> so we'll try it out. Howdy, folks. You like blood, violence, and freaks of nature? On a stormy Halloween night, four young people set out across the back roads of America. What's that? It's a hitchhiker. What, should we stop? We can't leave right here in the rain. In search of a mysterious figure known only as... Dr. Satan. You know anything about the legend of Dr. Satan? Yeah, I can show you. Dr. Satan! Ah, Dr. Satan! What they uncovered... Yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. ...is the most horrifying and shocking tale of carnage ever seen. Well, I bet you'd stick your head to fire if I told you you could see hell. You seen this girl? Yeah, they want to play Nancy Drew with this local legend that people call Dr. Satan. Stupid kids probably got themselves lost. Let's get out of this nut house. The boogeyman is real. <laughs> and you found him. From director Rob Zombie <laughs> comes a journey into hell. This can't be real, this can't be real, this can't be real. <laughs> House of a Thousand Corpses. Hope you like what you see! Okay, uh, well, who wants to synopsize this? We usually go with oh. our brand new guest. <laughs> Try and tell us what the hell this movie was about. I don't even know. <laughs> so, okay, a bunch of kids. They're out looking for, uh, uh, I don't know, like roadside attractions and yeah. like stories, urban legends, I guess. And then uh, they end up at this fucking crazy house with a bunch of crazy people. I don't know if Doctor, like is Doctor, oh, fuck, I want to Satan. say Doctor. Satan, there we go. Uh, like... Are they related to him? Like, are they all part of the family? How are they, How is he in the basement of the house? You mean Spaulding? No, no, Doctor Satan. Satan. Spaulding's just a family friend. Yeah. I feel. <laughs> you, you, okay. Oh yeah, you're right you know? there. So you mean is Doctor Satan related to the family? They didn't. Yeah, they the didn't say how family. did they ever find him? Which, you know, it was Sherry Moon's character who I don't remember the name of. Um, does, baby. What? Baby. Baby. Oh, yeah. God, oh, yeah. B A B. Give me a B. Give me a B. Give me a B. Why? That's awful. Um, Have you ever wanted to sing just some Justin Bieber right now? Or? Uh, I gotta go. She does. <laughs> when, when they're talking at the house, she does mention she's. They says she says that like asks how many of you are there. She says, "Oh, we're from all over. There's a few, loads of us around here. Yeah. I think they're all related." So they, or are they even related? They just weirdos find each other. I was thinking more yeah. the, the other kind of related. Oh, <laughs> oh Texas Chainsaw yeah. related. <laughs> they look that way. They come off that way, yeah. Um, uh, no, first when I watched this film, I got a Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe. I watched the first one it came out, and this is my first time seeing it since then. So that, what was that, 2003, I think it was released. Yep. Uh, so this is yeah, the first time seeing it since then. And since then, I picked up on a whole lot of other things, other movies that it was related to, a lot of Italian stuff like Fulci, and uh, even some of the soundtrack stuff kind of gave that Fabio Frizi sort of vibe. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so what are you guys' impressions of the film? Uh, I've said this before, that I was really disappointed with it when it came out. Yeah. Uh, Rob Zombie spent a lot of years talking about this movie before it came out. It was in a lot of different mags. And no, it took three years to get released. It was uh, dropped by a bunch of studios. It was filmed in 2000 and wasn't released until 2003. Exactly, and there was a ton of different media coverage from metal magazines, be it Metal Hammer, Kerrang, whatever, Terrorizer. And as a horror fan, I was really, really excited for it. And then when I saw it, I was really disappointed. Um, <laughs> I, I don't quite remember why. 
I, I think at one point it lost me when I was watching it. And after that, I never went back to it. I can say today that I really enjoyed it. No, I totally agree. I, I, I fell into the same boat. I was like, I, when I watched it, I was waiting for it for so long. And then I was kind of disappointed with it when I saw it and watched it for the second time. I was like, I really loved it. Uh, you've seen this movie more than any of us. Mm -hmm. so. I just like it because it brings that feel of like an old cult classic back. It's so like it's twisted. It's fucked yeah. up. And that's kind of it's nice to watch a movie and then not know exactly what just happened. You have to keep watching it and pick up yeah. little things. And yeah, lots, lots of gore. James? Oh, I, I love this movie. I've seen, <laughs> seen it lots. It's, there's nothing really wrong with it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> it was a fun one. Baby's voice. That's probably bad. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I, I, oh, I'm sure like... he was really good in it. Oh. Um, honestly, like, there's so many things in it that I, I didn't appreciate back when it came out. Mm. Uh, straight up Sid Haig. Yeah. yeah. Captain Spaulding, just amazing. Yeah. He could yeah. carry that on his own. Yeah. The rest of the cast were great. Bill Mosley was in there. Um, Rain Wilson, which is really, <laughs> really funny. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> Chris Hardwick, I thought, did a great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't even recognize him. Uh, Walton Goggins. It was before he got sober and, and got all skinny and stuff. Mm. <laughs> oh, he looks nothing like yeah. he does now. Like, <laughs> no. But yeah, Walton Goggins, yeah. huge fan of that guy. Really great cast. Yeah, yeah, they all... They all work really well together all the time. They have, like, their little family. Yeah, yeah. I mean... It's in uh, real life, right. I've, like, I totally didn't watch this movie again. I love the second part. I've watched that a bunch of times. Devil's Rejects. Devil's Excellent. Rejects. Yeah. Uh, which is a completely different type of film. It's really 70s exploitation. Meets Western. Yeah, 70s road movie sort of thing. Yeah. This is a straight up no-nonsense horror. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you, you were saying it, uh, kind of that trashy exploitation thing of it, which it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said the exploitation mm -hmm. part, but it's it feels like a midnight movie. Yeah. It really does. There's so many great 16 mil shots in it. <laughs> and effects yeah. shots yeah. like uh, the negative that part I didn't like so much that, mm. that kind of an, I didn't feel the need for that so much I, Rob Zombie was trying to do something stylistic I yeah. think mm. um, Mike kind of developed his voice with the next film a little bit more the 16 mil shots were done all in Rob Zombie's basement <laughs> that's awesome on weekends when he could get actors over to do it <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome yeah uh, yeah I thought that was it was it's very stylistic he's mm -hmm. a very stylistic director are you guys a fan of any of his other films yeah all of them yeah all of them he's just trying to do something so different right yeah. you watch movies now and it's like there's there's nothing to it whatsoever there's no art in it there's no excitement there's no nothing he's yeah. just trying to change it change yeah. the game a bit I, I wasn't a huge fan of uh, 31 Okay, yeah, and, no, that's true. And good uh, <laughs> like I, I've seen quite a few of his movies, and they're they're all quite good. But I mm -hmm. think that this one, you know, it was you know he was cutting his teeth, and uh, thirty one. This, this one, yeah, <laughs> this one kind of uh, it looks like you're watching a white zombie album <laughs> or, a, or a Rob Zombie album, like with all those cut-ins to the 16 mil stuff that just seems like the little samples that yeah. he puts into his music, you know? Like, yeah, well, he does do that long section shot where there's a song playing and uh, for uh, uh, Otis shoots the... That's right. <laughs> that yeah. pull-out is well, so I mean, and he, he <laughs> It's a pull-out game, though. Yeah, I know, but... I, <laughs> I don't like, know if this is appropriate. I didn't really ask first. It's all appropriate. We have children watching. <laughs> yeah, it's all those children that are big fans of Rob Zombie's first movie. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was really good. And then, of course, he redoes that to the like eighth degree in the next film with uh, playing all of... Um, Freebird. Freebird. Like yeah. all right at the end. Yeah. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen Devil's Rejects more than twice. Yeah. Um, I don't even own it. Uh, I really like it. Yeah, it's um, good. Do you know what's funny is that that scene where he's, he's got the cop on his knees and it pulls out. Yeah. Is <laughs> earlier on, the, the DVD stopped because of the scratch <laughs> yeah, and I, I wondered for a moment I was like are we all waiting because we all went really quiet and I was like are we all waiting to see if this no, I ended up having to watch the corner of the screen oh, you, can, <laughs> you can see the film grain <laughs> so like, I knew it was still moving but yeah I, I thought and it was great tension building without any sound at that point because that's all yeah. the sound stops and it's just okay well 
we're, we know what's going to happen, but when is it going to happen? Well, i got to say that when I realised, I mean, again, we're talking within less than 30 seconds. Yeah. It's so well done. And that, was, for me, was a real highlight of the film. Because when the shot goes off, it's so loud. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great because the silence and the pull out and then the shot is excellent. The, the falcon in the background. <laughs> he played a lot with silence too in um, Halloween 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this before we yeah. watched the movie. We're going to get to that. <laughs> the old white horse. Yeah, see, I like Halloween too. But I really think he. This is him really cutting his teeth as a filmmaker and trying out different things. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we can see where all that co- goes to later on in his career. I mean, and now there's a third film in this series. They're, they're, Aaron. Yeah, they're supposed to be shooting really soon. I don't know how <laughs> exactly they're going to take off from that the end of the Maybe second one. Got, Maybe. It's not a prequel or something like that? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that, would, that would be interesting, but... Prequel would make sense. Like, that could have been the end, the absolute end, and then they just go back to before these House of a Thousand Corpses killings started. Mm-hmm. Well, because there was obviously a lot of other people killed. Yeah. Right? The, there's people in the, the cage. Tunnels. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's, there's the, the, the tunnels cage. lined with bodies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about the set design. Uh, it's a $7 million movie, I think, is what I, I, wow. I looked up. It looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, set design-wise, it... It they took their really, time on every piece. Yeah. The house is great. Yeah. Oh, what did you say that it was the same house as the uh, uh, best little whorehouse in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> Dolly Burton. Yeah. yeah. I have on Blu-ray. Uh, nice. Fish Boy, though. They did really good with him. Yeah. Yeah, that Fish Boy. Yeah, we, we were talking about Fish Boy. Fish Boy looks good. There's a lot of really great visuals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it was incredible set design. Especially those caves and stuff with all the bodies. Mm-hmm. Like, that was where I was really impressed. Oh, maybe we should talk about the soundtrack. Yeah, there was uh, a lot of Rob Zombie music and then some odd choices as well. <laughs> no, no, the 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 fifties and sixties stuff. That was the standout. That was yeah. awesome. The, the scene where the cops turn up at the house, and it slowly draws out as how she, she shoots the cop in the head, yeah. and they're all realizing that everything's turning upside down. There was that piece of music. It yeah. sounded like Bobby Vinton, but it's not playing over the top that was great yeah I, I personally don't know Rob Zombie's music that well so I couldn't tell you what was in it what wasn't mm-hmm. there was a bunch of, yeah. of songs in there but yeah and then his use of older music as well because this film takes place in 1977 uh, it doesn't directly state that mm-hmm. I was I didn't know that in the first viewing at all uh, there's clues to it with vehicles and stuff like that uh, didn't get that at all to be honest no I I mm-hmm. I got it this time, not the first time. Well, there were just sure. families that were a little behind in the time, you know? Well, that's why uh, that's <laughs> like, I was confused yeah. with the second film, because the second film's clearly set in the 70s. Good uh, point. Yeah, so I'd, I need to watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I need to go watch Devil's Rejects now. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess what everyone else think of the soundtrack. And the music choice is great. Yeah. You're a big Rob Zombie. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> his music is amazing. All I gotta say is Brick House, motherfucker. Right? Brick <laughs> House. <laughs> 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 he used the, the, the cover version and the real version in the film. <laughs> mm, this is great. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was two different versions. Yeah. It. Mm. it was just such an eerie scene, though. Like They come in, Chris Hardwick is on the chopping block, pretty much. <laughs> They're just having a great yeah, she, time. Yeah, she just turns, Trey Moon just turns on the radio and just starts dancing and Otis goes over and just starts cutting his face. Like, <laughs> his facial expressions on there, though. I mean, oh, he kind of worked on that. <laughs> that was great. It was horror, man. I mean, it, it comes off so as comical, scared. right? Because it's, cause it's Rain Wilson, right? He comes off as yeah. comical. Like. <laughs> what are some of your favorite scenes? I really liked when they put them in the coffin and drop mm-hmm. them down the music and then put the the dictaphone yeah. down there with them that's got that warp tape on it I was totally going to say that bury me in a nameless amazing. grave yeah. that, is, that is pure torture that is that is not Eli Roth freaking you know torture porn crap that is real freaking <laughs> let's torture the shit out of someone <laughs> listening to that on repeat well yeah they do do some pretty torturous things like when Otis puts on the girl's father's face. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, like very Texas Chainsaw. Great. Or uh, 
or deranged. Deranged, yep. Canadian culture. At that moment, <laughs> it took it too far. <laughs> Everything else was fine. <laughs> that was too much. There's a, there's a little skinning and, and scalping sort of thing in this as well. There is. There's a yeah. Little... Oh, yeah, yeah. There's some really creepy practical effects in there. Uh, it's a very gory film. <laughs> mm-hmm. The scene, the scene where they find the girl in the, with the other girls in the uh, back shed, that whole scene that transpires is crazy. Yeah, Every, think, all the horror going on in the room and their reaction, and then of course Otis coming out and. I'm like, is it supposed away. to be funny in those moments? I know we were no, giggling that, and the laughing. We were talking like, about with the song yeah. playing over the top. Yeah. It's great. It's so they're like marionettes. It's freaking great. She's like, all like like yeah. writhing, and they're all dead around her. <laughs> the it scene the scene started off with the cop leading the old guy, and then they saw the dog. And then it cuts away, and then it cuts back, and now the old guy is leading the cop because he's scared of dogs, talking about how he got bit by a cocker mm-hmm. spaniel. <laughs> that was my <laughs> I was thinking halfway through that I didn't like the score part of it, and then I realized, no, I really love parts of it. It's really percussive and stuff like that, and kind of Fabio Frizi, I was kind of thinking in, in some parts, and unsettling. This is me getting really nerdy about film now. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Italian composers. <laughs> this is great though. The this same Fabio Frizi that I had tickets to see in London and got sick. I uh, missed it. Oh my God. Two years ago. You better have been dying. Oh, this was bad. It was bad. <laughs> Thank you uh, to that Spanish restaurant in London that caused me. <laughs> and you're still open, by the way. Fuck <laughs> you. Anyway, back to the movie. One of the things, again, I'm going to say this. This is fucking me repeating myself. Mm-hmm. You talk about scenes we loved. Anything with Sid Haig. Yeah. yeah. Anything he did, it was great. His, yeah. his performance, his demeanor, is fucking great. The bit where he talks to the cops when he meets the kids, it's awesome. <laughs> he he is so scary. <laughs> Even the intro DVD menu. That yeah. was one of the best parts. Uh, yeah, of we watched that. We sat down to watch that. It's four minutes long. Uh, it's just him talking to you about why you're not starting the film. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> if you actually go into that film and look at all the other different special features, uh, the other characters of the movie are narrating and hosting the other special features. Oh, nice. So you'll have, uh, you'll have uh, Baby is hosting, oh, here's the deleted scenes, or Otis is hosting, oh, here's the commentary. Mm. Oh, shit. That's awesome. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's delve into some of Rob Zombie's other film career and what we think of it. What's going to come up as well? Because uh, we're going to be doing. This, right? Well, yeah, we might as well just talk a little bit about. It. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the elephant in the room, the Halloween films. Dude, you, uh, now you're a big Rob Zombie fan. Before I go to him, because I know what he's going to say. Yeah. Well, I don't, but I, I'm waiting for it. Uh, what do I'm you a like big in- Rob Zombie fan, and I'm a big Halloween fan. Like yeah. I love those movies, and I think he fucking killed it. It was amazing. I, I yeah. think he did better than the originals. In my opinion. Come now, come now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, Sherry's acting is not the greatest, but the rest of the movies were really great. <laughs> James? <laughs> His lip is quivering. It's quick. I'm, I'm going to go right down the middle because uh, I'm ashamed to say it, but I haven't seen Halloween 1 or 2, the oh, Rob Zombie it's one. It's over there. Oh, no, I, I the Rob Zombie one. Okay. I haven't watched them yet. <laughs> All right, then coming up next time on Room Man. Yeah. <laughs> but I hear I, they're I, really I, good. <laughs> I, I had to. Re- I, I bought the entire Halloween box set on Blu-ray a little while ago, Sweet. and uh, for another show I was working on, I reviewed two of Rob Zombie's Halloweens. I revisited them. Did not like them the first time. So I was such a big fan of John Carpenter's original film, mm-hmm. and even the sequel I really enjoyed as well too. That being said. I like Rob, the director's cut of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I really enjoyed that. I, a lot of people really hate it. Ben. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw Rob Zombie's Halloween here when I lived here like 10 years ago. Uh, I was really excited for it because Rob Zombie said one line. He said in an interview that this is a Halloween film for Halloween fans. If you're not a Halloween fan, do not watch it. When I saw it here, I enjoyed it. Uh, now, there's two versions of this movie yes. with two very, very different kind of plot parts in them. When I saw it here, when Michael escapes, he escapes by beating a guy to death, one of whom is Danny Trejo, and that's how he escapes. When I saw it in England, there is this really, really horrible scene with a rape of, a, of a, a, another patient at the hospital. 
Well, they bring her into Michael's room and yeah. rape her while which he is, watches. Yeah, which is like the most unnecessary thing ever. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 and that and here's the thing: I've never been able to find the other version since, so I'm stuck with this version. <laughs> that I, I I really go. That is so unnecessary. So um, rape is not okay for you. <laughs> Noted. Yeah. No, I've watched a lot. Of, I've watched Irreversible, so I've seen my fair share of horrible films. That's forty-five. <laughs> yeah, it's just like okay, but that aside. My biggest issue with Rob Zombie's Halloween is that Michael Myers is played by a giant, which is ridiculous. Michael is, is a normal person who who has evil in him. That's the whole thing of Michael yeah. Myers. And we're mm-hmm. not supposed to know what that is. He's not supposed to be this this giant wrestler. Who and it's, it's kind of silly. Now, the cast of it is really good. Daniel Harris is in it. Daniel Harris is yeah, wonderful. I've been in love with her since I was a freaking kid. <laughs> like, amazing. She was amazing in Halloween 4, Halloween 5. I spoke to her about her role playing Annie Brackett in uh, Rob Zombie 1 and how it was kind of Michael Myers catching up with her and what she agreed upon and that was kind of why they did that. The first half of that movie with um, his mum, I really enjoy that part. Yeah. The bit where Michael's sitting on the step and they play Love Hurts and it's got <laughs> his mum stripping, that was really well shot and I really enjoyed that. It was once he became the adult, I felt like it was really lackluster. And it was just the same old shit, like just busting through walls and <laughs> not I, being Michael Myers. I, I love the end. I thought the end was really was she shooting? exciting. Yeah, well, then a whole end scene where he's kind of busting through walls and he's chasing after her, where she's in the, in the ceiling and stuff like that. I thought that was a really exciting, tense in the cinema of scenes. Yeah. In the cinema, I, I remember enjoying it. Afterwards, I found that my interest wanes when I watch on DVD at home. Yeah. Uh, things happen at home. It, when you're in a cinema, your focus is on the screen. Yeah. Like, I went and saw Back to the Future at the cinema once, and it was like watching a new movie. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, this movie that I'd seen multiple dozens of times, I, nothing was distracting me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was picking up all these little things, which was great. Um, mm-hmm. The second one, I've tried to love, and I will watch it more than the first one. Yeah. We'll get into that. <laughs> well, I, 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 I want to us it. to watch it again, yeah. and, and then we'll. Well, we'll watch it. the director's cut because I think that's the way to go. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, end things off. Uh, would you recommend this film? Absolutely. Taylor. Uh, yep. Oh, well, I didn't. Oh, well. I didn't know you were cut him off. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know you were saying. <laughs> James is a big advocate for cutting me off, <laughs> and I totally understand why because I could talk for hours. <laughs> So, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you had to say a bunch to get around that. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> would you recommend it? Yes, I would. James. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yes, I guess. I, I couldn't say any more. No one else did. <laughs> it was my fault. Yeah. Uh... Shit. Okay, <laughs> before we go, let's make some plugs. Yeah, listen to Carrying King. Uh, we got our EP out right now, and uh, it's available everywhere: uh, Facebook, all those places, iTunes, MySpace, iCloud, <laughs> Tinder, GeoCities, Tinder, yeah, GeoCities, <laughs> <laughs> Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know what the day is, but there's going to be one day for Google Maps where they have a little Mario Kart. Oh, uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I got a little bit of a day for that. Oh, great. They used to yeah. have uh, Pac-Man. Yeah. You can play oh, Pac-Man awesome. on the Calgary streets. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Cool. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. People were probably getting very distracted while they were driving. Like, we got to cut that. We got to cut that idea. <laughs> Taylor, plug. <laughs> um, TaylorMcNally.com. Everything is there. Everything's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Taylor Mc- underscore McNally for everything. Mm-hmm. James, uh, listen to Gales of Avalon and Carrie and King. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I would like to plug uh, my new channel, Canadian Cult Cinema, on YouTube. It's also Facebook and Twitter. It's all Canadian Cult Cinema, where we review uh, Canadian cult movies. <laughs> lots of forgotten classics from uh, nice. the Great White North. Yeah, lots of interesting films up there. Okay, uh, so we usually end with a clip from the film. What do you guys want to pick? You didn't plug your synth. I didn't. That's really good. Okay, I, I'll plug that. Uh, it's <laughs> just uh, that's just like, and I'll put the link in the sh- notes because it's not a proper. It's on uh, Mark Dillon on SoundCloud. Does it's, it have a name? Uh, no, it's just Mark, Mark Dillon. Dillon. 
this time just using my real just name. Good old Mark. Dylan. I should have picked a different name. MD. Like Mark for Fears or something. Yeah, something like that. Something like uh, <laughs> Tears for Mark. <laughs> Tears for Mark. <laughs> what was, what was, was Gallo's was, was, was Gallo's country name for you? <laughs> what about, I don't know. I don't know, but it's on. Uh, <laughs> they put the link in the show notes. It's lots of crazy, sick, on eighty Mark. stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, okay, uh, so we usually pick uh, something from the end, something from the film to end probably off. Can't, on. Though. What? Probably can't because you get flagged. I probably can't. Yeah, I don't know. Well, until next time. Here's a photo of his <laughs> face. What about that uh, serial part for you? That hope you like what you see. Hope you like what you oh. see. <laughs> <laughs> He's not He's like, mm, yeah, but that's like one of the 16 mil parts, so they might not notice that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Very thank small. you so much for watching. Uh, if you'd like to suggest a movie, leave that in the comments, please. Uh, like us on Facebook, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. And until next time, see ya. <laughs>